Welcome to Deep Tech 315. Our first topic is uh, the ban on TikTok that is back in orbit. Appeals court upheld the president and Congress decision earlier in the year to ban TikTok. China has said, or uh, ByteDance, I should say, uh, has uh, suggested that they are not interested in a forced sale. So effectively, uh, kind of by mid-January of 2025, we have uh, this uh, for sale option. We have an option that uh, ByteDance says we just don't want to be told what to do and we'll just shut this down even though we're walking away from a lot of dough. And option three is nothing changes. This, of course, has an impact on Meta and has an impact on uh, X, uh, Elon's company. So a lot of forces going on here. Let's start with um, maybe the basics. Uh, what do you think TikTok is worth uh, from uh, at least the U.S. business would be worth? I mean, we look at Reddit's a $30 billion company, 60, 70 million users. TikTok has about 180 million U.S. users. Is that kind of a good place to start? The logical place to start. Uh, I mean, you could you could go back to what Elon paid for Twitter now X, which I believe was around forty five at that time. I think that and that obviously is a global platform, but a large part of that user base is in the U.S. So I think it's safe to say that TikTok is worth somewhere in the you know high tens of billions, maybe maybe something like a hundred. Um, but the you know the other thing that is important to note is that's just TikTok this, U.S. By the way. TikTok US, yeah, the the parent company ByteDance, oh, yeah. I believe, last round was three hundred billion in terms of valuation. Um, so it's a chunk of the three hundred. the The thing about the you know this cutoff date, right, is is they would basically be uh, Congress would in, enact a law that would have Apple and Google pull TikTok from the App Store. So it doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean it's off your phones. Just to be right. clear about how all the mechanics would work, but they wouldn't be able to update the app anymore. It's an effective ban. Um, and if they don't comply or do something before then, right, you know, a sale. Content creators, the by the way, they can keep creating content. I believe that would be true. Yes. But, but yeah, again, if, just, if they're, they're enforcing the it at the app level. Well, it, it, I'm trying to think of how, how to frame it because immediately, okay, let's say on that January date, the ban happens. I actually don't think the use of TikTok changes at all for some period, right? Mm -hmm. Because the app will be still, again, on people's phones. You can't take it off of people's phones. Um, and it would still be functional, but it wouldn't be able to be updated in the future. That's my understanding of what they're proposing. That's my understanding too. So I'm going to call this uh, option one is die on the vine. Yeah, funny, uh, funny word to use too, because Vine was the inspiration for TikTok. But yeah. <laughs> uh, second option is the sale. Now, this is the one where uh, this dynamic uh, and one side of the ledger, you'll have ByteDance say, we don't want the U.S. government to tell us what we're going to do. Therefore, we're going to shut it down. And that's their line right now. But they may have a motivation to be using that as their line right now. You want to tell us a little bit more about that. Why would they be so emphatic that they're not going to sell? All, all of these types of things are public negotiations. So it's fine to say that you don't want to sell, but I mean, I think you have to pull back and look at the reality and the logic. You know, the, if you believe that the Chinese government is effectively in control of TikTok, that may or may not assumption. be true. I yeah, think it's a good If assumption. you believe that, then your question is, well, why wouldn't the Chinese government want to pull in tens of billions, if not 100 billion plus, into a Chinese company, right, that's under their control. We've seen over the past year plus, several years actually, the Chinese government fining Tencent, Alibaba, JD, all their big successful internet companies, tens of billions of dollars. So they care, like, they care about a billion. So it's not that, yeah, they certainly yeah. care about money. I think that it's right. silly to think that they don't care about money. Now, could they just say, you know, out of pride that we're just going to let this thing die? They could say that. I think that seems highly unlikely, though. But, but the, it's illogical probably the motivation, uh, the motivation for them to say currently that they're not going to sell is they want to put pressure on lawmakers. They want uh, they want lawmakers to think if they ban this in quotes, uh, they're not going to sell. Therefore, their constituents are going to be out of their addictive TikTok, and so 
that's, uh, I think the negotiation piece, I just want to kind of emphasize, I think that's the negotiation piece that's going on. I, I do agree with you that ultimately the most likely outcome is this uh, gets sold. And if we separate ourselves, like we live in the tech world. So this, this story matters to us to talk about the average American, I would be willing to bet a lot of money doesn't even know about this. And even they, the average TikTok user, I, I bet, bet the average TikTok care. user knows this. I bet it's they don't over, care. It's, I bet they don't care. And I'll tell you why. I bet they, because if I you bet go they don't back, care because no, they say it's never going to happen. Go back It'll four never... years. Go back four years when we had an agreement under the prior administration, which is now the incoming administration, that TikTok was going to be kind of forced divestiture, right? And it could have been banned then. There were all these other apps that were kind of emerging that were replacements for TikTok that people were going to and being prepared to essentially move their platforms I see, off. Okay. Of if you're yeah, if you're a big creator, if you're a big creator and you have an audience on TikTok, you care. That's a small audience. The right. average TikTok user, to my point, they'll just I think they'll get they their care. fix. They'll get their fix they'll someplace else. They'll go to Threads. Right. They'll go to Meta. You know, whatever. Yep. Yeah, the average. I um, I just in speaking to that audience, I. I think they really do love TikTok, but you're right. Uh, you take that away, they'll they will quickly find some other way to to get their uh, uh, get their short videos. Uh, let's jump to our second topic, also a big topic, which is Salesforce reported the guidance was actually disappointing. A lot of headlines said that the guidance was good. I'm not going to go through all the details, but I think it was at best in line for the January quarter. At worst, the one percent guide down, but the stock was up. Since they reported the last few days, it's been up about 9%. The NASDAQ's up about 2% during that period. So uh, the outperformance is somewhat related to a little bit faster subscription growth, call it 10% versus expectations of 9%, uh, but also Benioff's comments. And he had public he, in the call he spoke for about 20 minutes. I counted 23 times that he had comments that were optimistic, bullish, and I'm just going to sum it up. This is the biggest thing ever to happen in our lives. This is Benny Hoff, uh, uh, biggest thing ever, ever to happen in tech, number one. And number two is uh, that the company is going to be totally reinvented and become an agent-based company. So the sales force of old kind of goes away and this whole agentic theme is what he's all about. So my view, the stock is up as the light is kind of going on for investors related to AI. And it begs the uh, bigger question, which is hardware obviously has been the winner in the AI trade over the last two years. Software has been done better lately. Are we at a point right now where we're going to start to see software getting a better bid related to AI? I think we've already started to see that. Uh, we you started, go back but... A, a couple more weeks, Snowflake had a pretty decent quarter. Strong commentary about their opportunities in AI. Obviously, Palantir, you, you need to go back to the beginning of the year, end of last year. I mean, that stock's up, I think, almost 200%, maybe even more than that at this point. And so there's certainly been already, I think, a search for where are these companies that are in the software realm that can benefit from AI. I think Salesforce has a decent story at that. Well, let, let, me about, let me know one thing on the on the, the trade. I, uh, it's... The, the stocks have been moving more recently, as you said. Their businesses really haven't been moving, though, right? When we see this breathtaking move that some of the hardware companies have had in terms of their acceleration, we haven't seen that. Salesforce grew at 8%. No. That was their seven. They grew at 18% in Q4 of 2023. So they've had a deceleration through this. They've largely missed it. And, uh, you know, there's the anticipation. I feel like the market is saying, okay, we're starting to believe now, like this is actually going to happen in software, but correct me, has software actually seen a real reacceleration that uh, we eventually believe is coming, but has it actually started to happen? Not in the public space. No, I think yeah, not in the public. private, private examples you could point to. Yeah, but not in the public space. And I'll say what I've been saying for the last kind of, I think it's been six to nine months you're probably still going to find some periods of disappointment. I still think that for most of these companies, software companies that are public, you're probably still a year or more away from meaningful AI contribution to the revenue picture. And so people are trying to get ahead of it. That makes sense because everybody sort of agrees. I think that yeah. AI could be this profound thing and we're going to see moves like this. 
but I wouldn't be surprised if you have another period of disillusionment in the next mm -hmm. six, nine, 12 months, because the software revenue probably still won't be there early enough to justify the moves in the near term. I'll leave the Salesforce conversation with a comment from their CFO twice in the call. Uh, it was mentioned that, uh, that agent force had, uh, it was a de minimis, uh, impact on revenue. And so it's all about, uh, what's to come in the future. We're obviously on board with, uh, how transformative this can be. I generally agree with all of Benioff's positive outlook here. Uh, we're going to stay on the AI theme and jump to the New York Times, their deal book that's hosted by Andrew Sorkin, uh, uh, kind of an important uh, commentary related to AI and uh, you know how OpenAI is thinking about this from Sam Altman. I think the couple of big takeaways from that uh, that interview. Number one, he gave some updated statistics just around GPT usage, 300 million weekly active users. Obviously, that still pales in comparison to, you know, search as a comp. I think that's the comp everybody kind of uses in this case, where you've probably got uh, several billion daily active users on Google. Same can be said for Meta and its properties. So obviously, it's a really big property but most of the world still is not using AI. We're still really early on that metric. And the other thing he said was a billion daily queries, which again, I think pales in comparison to search, which is probably uh, multiple orders of magnitude greater than that. So that's the state of the union, GPT growing really fast, still a lot to go. The other thing that I think that was really big that he said was this question around scaling laws has sort of been dogging the whole industry the last month. Uh, have we hit kind of a wall? You know, we've had this linear path higher as we use more compute, more data to train these models. And Altman had a tweet a couple of weeks ago where he said, there is no wall. And uh, Sorkin asked him about that. And Altman basically said, I was trying to be as non-cryptic as possible. Like he is just being literal. They're not really running into a wall, at least in his opinion right now. So that's kind of the state of AI. I think it, it sort of confirms that we're still early, but there's rapid adoption and that the way that we've been improving these models, I think is still intact, at least for the near term. Right on, encouraging across the board on AI in this past week. On behalf of Doug and I, bye for now.